People got super sad that I was bashing on Intel. On today's Apple Daily, we're talking about what's happened between Apple and Intel and why we've had to move over to Apple Silicon and why people get sad about it. And then we're going to answer a bunch of your questions. So let's get straight into it. So let's start off with the Intel thing. And let's look at what's actually going on. In the past, Intel committed to their roadmap of improving their production methods, reducing node sizes, and increasing the efficiency of their chips over time. This is the exact reason that Apple had issues with their MacBook Pros throttling the poor performance of the 12-inch MacBook. Intel had been unable to make the chips that were designed to go into it, so they had to use much lower performance chips than were intended to allow for enough heat dissipation. Add to that, they had years of uh, unpatchable Spectre exploits that plagued their chips and they kept that a secret instead of actually letting security researchers know what was going on so they could do something about it. They failed miserably to increase the performance of their chips without also increasing the power requirements and the thermal output. Now when Apple was originally developing the iPhone they approached Intel to work on the processors for these. It would have hugely simplified the software development because the original iOS was very closely based on macOS in terms of the core technologies behind it. But when Intel went interested Apple turned to ARM based chips manufactured by Samsung originally putting them on the course that has led to Apple Silicon today, leading them to overtake Intel, at least in the notebook processor market. There is no denying the performance per watt of Apple Silicon, and that is what keeps the temperatures low, gives the insane battery life, and all the quality of life improvements that we have in the current MacBooks. And it's only getting worse for Intel. Gamers Nexus, the famously Apple-focused channel that builds gaming rigs using AMD, Intel, and all the other stuff, and does some of the most accurate testing I found on the internet, called the 11th generation chips from Intel a waste of sand. That is a sick burn. This isn't Apple fanboys hating on Intel. This is Intel failing at the most basic part of their job, which is making chips that are better each time and not losing massive customers. This month, Intel launched an, a set of six ads designed to antagonize Mac fans by hiring the iconic I'm a Mac actor and then making ads without a single one of them referencing something that Intel does better other than sell chips to OEMs who actually do something interesting with them. Intel in all of those laptops is responsible for the performance, the thermals, and to an extent the battery life. Nothing else. None of those things were mentioned once in the ads. In fact, the one ad that actually focused on something they're responsible for was Thunderbolt, the port that they criticized Apple for using and said that it's a dongle mess. And many of the laptops that were featured in these adverts also only use Thunderbolt. And some of them have one Thunderbolt port so you can charge or plug in a peripheral and nothing else. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely some features of those laptops that they featured that I think would be really cool to come to Apple. I think it would be great if we could play some more games on Apple Silicon, but that comes down to developers, that's nothing to do with Apple, that's nothing to do with Intel. I think it would be really cool to have that extra kind of touchscreen display that the Asus or Acer laptop, I always get the two confused, but the, the double screen laptop looked pretty cool. I mean, palm rests are handy too, and so is having a reasonable trackpad, which is one of the things that Apple does incredibly well, but still, that looked kind of cool. And then, in the same month that they put these adverts out, the new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, says that they're building two new fabs and would love to have Apple as a customer. Get in the sea, Gelsinger. I hope that the reason that we're seeing more and more Intel Macs get delisted, the iMac Pro with Intel Xeon, the 21.5 inch iMacs with the higher configurations, etc, is because Tim Cook has just put his foot down and said once the Intel components we have on the shelf are gone, they're gone, we're buying no more. Push out what we have in Apple Silicon and let's just accelerate the transition because that's what we all want, is that transition to be just done. Because as I've said before, there is no good reason to buy an Intel Mac or PC. Go AMD. Okay, so that was my rant section. Let me know if you agree, or if you don't. I don't really care whether you agree or not in the comments, but let's have a chat about it. And now we're going to get into some iCave answers, where if you've got any questions you want to ask me about Apple stuff, uh, probably not about Intel performance because um, I'll just upset you, then ask them down in the comments, and I'll be delighted to answer them. So the first one comes in from Dwayne Alfred. Do you think that Apple will partner with the AAA game developers. If the new Apple TV could run some version of FIFA, NBA, or Call of Duty, it would be the ultimate win. I will never buy another Xbox or PlayStation again. And this is a great question. It's something that we've been talking about for a little while on this channel, is that actually, very much like Microsoft has just done with Bethesda, um, Apple should buy some game studios, or to bring some AAA games from Apple Arcade. Now, we have got some really cool stuff coming. So one of the big ones that I've noticed today is coming is uh, Fantasagora. 
or something along those lines. I'll put the actual name of it on the screen so that you can see it. Um, but that is from the guys that made the original Final Fantasy games. And those are amazing games. Those are the games that I played when I was younger on PlayStation. And I loved them. So super excited to see what comes out with that it's in the coming soon section of the app store right now and if you go and click on it you can find it in the apple arcade section i think most people have got a free trial available to them for apple arcade if they haven't used it already um but i'm on apple one so i kind of get pretty much access to it all um you can click on it as get and it will basically tell you as soon as it's ready it will download it automatically to your device that you asked for the notifications on it'll send you emails and all sorts so you'll not miss the launch so that's quite exciting but yeah, I can definitely see Call of Duty coming to the TVs. Even if it's Call of Duty Mobile, I'd be well happy to play that on a TV with a controller. That would be absolutely cool. I play it a lot on the uh, iPad right now. That's that's just kind of the one thing I will do to switch my brain off for a little bit. So if you want to play with me, it's uh, at BartenderHQ is my gamer tag on Call of Duty. Because that's my old channel name. But yeah, I do think that the way that Apple is going to have to approach this, if they want to get AAA games onto Apple Silicon and onto the iPhone and the iPad and everything else... They need to either buy some game developers or set up their own in-house one, maybe, because I think they could do some really good work. Next question comes from Dennis W. Do you think when they get to the Mac Pro, they will just stack several M1X processors inside to get the outrageous performance of the Pro machine? Now, there was, um, there was a reply to this in the comments as well, which basically said uh, that the ARM processors don't have multiprocessor support. Um, that, yes, it's a bit of a stumbling block, but I actually think it's something that Apple could quite easily address if they wanted to. And I think um, the 2018 Mac Mini actually had uh, support for, or at least was announced with support for, I don't know if it ever happened, that you would be able to use Mac Minis on your network to offload stuff using things like um, Compressor and Final Cut. I think you could send like your render projects to that, so it happened on a separate computer to the one that you're using. That was part of the reason they put 10 gig Ethernet into it. I think that multiprocessor support probably will come because I think it would be awesome to, especially if they do go down the line of the uh, Mac Mini SE that we were talking about yesterday, where you could have multiple low-powered M1 Macs around your house attached to different TVs as kind of uh, occasional computers maybe because they're quite low-priced. I think it would be awesome if your network could then go, okay, well, we've got a big video project to render and nobody else is using their computers, so let's just split it out between all of these systems in the house. That would be a great way of doing it. And actually, that kind of ties in with the next question that we've got too, um, which will be uh, a, probably one of the best segues that I've ever done by accident. Uh, coming, back to, uh, coming back to the multiprocessor support in a Mac Pro, if we look right back to the G5, um, Apple's Power Mac G5s did have two separate CPU cores on the same motherboard. In fact, they came on daughter boards that plugged into the motherboard. Yeah, it basically ran two Power Mac G5 processors side by side. Not multi-core within the cores, I don't think, but actually two separate dies in two separate sockets. So I would not be surprised if Apple does go down this route. I know it would have some technical issues. It would have some technical challenges for Apple to overcome, but because it's their own architecture and their own stuff that they're building... All they're licensing is the uh, the instruction set for the architecture. They're not licensing the design of the chips or anything else. So I do think that there is a decent chance that they might do this. The other big advantage for Apple in terms of doing this would be make less individual designs for chips, for individual dies, uh, and that way they can uh, maximize the production that they have. So if they're making loads of wafers of M1X chips, then that's a lot easier than making a few less M1X chips and then also designing something else that has its own R&D to put more chips into it. Your yields are going to be lower because you can only pick out the perfect dies from that silicon, whereas if you're doing less cores per die and then using more dies, it's kind of like the chiplet design I think that AMD uses. That could work. Uh, and I think that's used a lot in graphics, not so much in CPUs, but I don't see why it couldn't be. And the next question, Eli here. Do you think that Apple will bring back the airport time capsules or do you know of a similar wireless solution? Cheers. So um, I don't think that they are likely to bring that back. But what I was just saying then about the, uh, the Mac Minis, that if they're going to bring this Mac Mini SE out, why could that not also work as kind of a Wi-Fi extender? So if you're going to have these Macs around the house... Um, it would be awesome if they could also extend your wireless. They could also become a wireless ac access point that kind of bridges the gaps. Because wireless uh, kind of just gets worse 
it's like an exponential decay curve as far as I'm aware so the further you get away from it like if you double the distance away you get uh, a cube of how poor the signal is because obviously a circle gets a lot lot bigger quite quickly if you've got stuff within that circle you're going to boost it boost it boost it all over the place so I think that would be a quite cool way of doing it I think for desktops and stuff I don't see Apple coming back to building a router um, I would love it if they built their own mesh system but I do think it would be really cool if they also built that into their Macs in general and maybe even your iPhone could kind of receive the signal and boost it out again if needed maybe it could manage all of this intelligently iPads that are around the house that actually have the bigger battery to do that sort of thing home pods maybe they could also work as part of a mesh system all of this would be really really cool and if Apple's watching you can have that idea that's all yours so guys I know a bit of a weird show today there was very little news coming out so I just had to kind of address some of the concerns that have come up in these videos um, I know it feels like we're just bashing on Intel I'm not I just want the Apple Silicon Silicon to come because it's so much better than Intel it's not bashing on them that's celebrating Apple Silicon and that's what we want to do on this channel is celebrate all the cool stuff that Apple is doing and if they're doing some weird stuff then we'll call them out for it as well but in general they're doing a pretty good job right now so roll on April let's get some new iMacs let's get some new computers and let's get excited see you in the next one